so Dirac got more than he bargained for. So it's very easy to show, and this is something we will show in the appendix, is that the Dirac Hamiltonian has four eigenvalues, and those four eigenvalues are, there are two eigenvalues which are positive, and they are given by the relativistic mass energy relationship, but it also has two negative eigenvalues, which are negative of the mass uh, energy relationship of relativity. So here, E P is square root of C squared P squared plus M squared C four. So because Dirac was looking for an equation for the electron, the first two eigenvalues make perfect sense. They correspond to the two spin states of the electron. But what do the negative energy states correspond to? In fact, that this the existence of negative energy states threaten the whole stability of the Dirac equation or the solutions of the Dirac equation. This is what I mean. So suppose that this is the energy, and here we have positive energy. So the positive energy states start from mc squared, but it has negative energy states, so this is zero, and the negative energy states start from mc squared. So if we have an electron, which of course has some, uh, say, kinetic energy, therefore it has some positive energy, suppose that it interacts with some photon and loses its energy, and then because of the existence of negative energy state, it can easily fall to one of the negative energy states. But once it falls into a negative energy state, nothing is stopping it from falling further and in the process radiating more and more photons. And therefore, the negative energy states, because it's unbounded from below, imply that a particle can fall into these negative energy states and in the process radiate an infinite amount of energy. Clearly, this is not something that is physical. So what is the solution of that? So Dirac came up with a very ingenious solution. And his solution was, he surmised or he conjectured that all the negative energy states were occupied. So because electron is a fermion, so the electron is a fermion, so this means that electrons satisfy the Pauli exclusion principle. So the Pauli exclusion principle says that an electron can only occupy one allowed state. So given an energy, there could be only one electron with spin up and one electron with spin down. So if there are an infinite number of electrons which are occupying all the states, then an electron with positive energy will not have any energy state to jump down to and therefore it will not uh, jump down to a negative energy state and therefore it will not radiate an infinite amount of energy. However, the existence of <clears throat> um, this infinite sea of electrons, which is now called the Dirac sea, raises some questions. One of the questions is that why do we not see all these electrons? What Dirac did was that he used a little known solution of electromagnetism in which a constant electric field can have a boundary condition at infinity such that it becomes non-detectable. So he invoked that to essentially say that we don't observe the negative C of electron because we are used to it. So that was the first um, point. But there was another point, which was that 
suppose the an electron from the C, from the negative C, absorbs a photon. And by absorbing a photon, it then jumps to a positively a positive energy state. So then what happens is that the electron jumping up to the positive energy state leaves behind a vacancy in the Dirac C, which I am showing here in red. So this Vacancy, Dirac called it the hole. So this is the hole, and this is the electron. Now this hole acts just like a particle, which has the same mass as an electron, same spin, same magnetic moment, but has positive charge. Because if all the electrons which are around this hole if they're moving in, say, this direction, it appears that the hole is moving in the opposite direction. And therefore, the hole seems to have the opposite charge of the electron. So Dirac predicted that his equation uh, predicted a new particle, which Dirac called the hole. But five years after Dirac had predicted this new particle, it was discovered in an experiment in a cosmic ray a bubble chamber picture. And the person who discovered it experimentally called it the positron. So Dirac equation, the Dirac equation predicted the existence of antiparticle just from its symmetry properties. The discovery of the Dirac equation naturally led to a scenario where the number of particles was no longer fixed. And therefore, we needed a framework in which this could be described. And it turned out the correct framework for describing a scenario where we have a variable number of particles is quantum field theory.